Hello, Business 630 class. This is Professor Hassey. Today's date is Monday, July 25th. And this is our video number one of this final week of our corporate finance course, talking about case number three, your final case, which is entitled Financial Statement Analysis. And it's part of the theme of our last two weeks of our course, strategies that drive capital decision-making of which financial decision-making and financial analysis is a key. The second half will be our second video of the week, which will talk about um, capital valuation and mergers and acquisitions. But your final grade and your final work in this class will be a PowerPoint presentation of a financial analysis of the company that you selected way back at the beginning of the course. And I'll explain that in just a minute, uh, but I sure just wanna go over a couple of infrastructure uh, things for our course as we wrap up our study for this summer. <laughs> and let me bring up our Blackboard site. First of all, this has been a very uh, hectic summer and I apologize for that, but we're covering all the material we need. So that's a good thing for you all, but it's still been a little bit uh, fragmented. I've had some ill parents back in Michigan uh, this spring and summer, and I've had to make uh, numerous trips back and forth and tried to do the best I can. And I think we've done pretty good about getting the material covered and all the grades are now posted. Uh, case number two has been posted a few days ago. And you now know where you stand in this class. And if any of you have any questions or concerns about your standing, heading into this final grade this week, please uh, let me know. But we'll talk more about that uh, on our second video of the week, which will be posted uh, tomorrow. Uh, but let's, let's talk about uh, case number three and the subject of week six and seven is financial statement analysis. And I'm going to show you a very brief bit video for some of us who don't have or it's been a while about reviewing financial statements. Let's take a look at this video. We are going to discuss three common financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Are you familiar with these documents and why they matter to you? If you own your own business or even run a division of a business, it is imperative that you understand these statements because they tell you about the general financial health of the company. Also, if you have ever invested or considered investing in a company, whether through the purchase of stock or through a loan, you'll want to understand the company's financial health. In this program, we will explain each of these three statements and what their purpose is, how to read them, and how they can be applied in a real-world setting. So why is it important to understand all three financial statements? Basically, each one tells only part of the story. They are somewhat like pieces of a puzzle, and you need all three pieces to see the big picture. Let's begin by reviewing the general purpose of each financial statement and what distinguishes one statement from another. Simply put, the income statement tells you whether or not the company is profitable during a given period, usually monthly, quarterly, or annually. It may be helpful to think of an income statement in terms of a video camera. At the start of a period being measured, you hit the record button and the camera starts recording everything that takes place until you press stop. Similarly, an income statement indicates how a company is performing over an extended period of time. Knowing whether your company was profitable over a period of time does not necessarily tell you how much money the company has right now. That's what the balance sheet is for. In contrast to the income statement that records transactions in time like a video camera, the balance sheet is like a still camera, showing the company's financial state at a given moment. It provides a snapshot in time that can be used to determine how much the company currently has, how much it owes, and what is left for the owners. The cash flow statement is based on numbers from your income statement and balance sheet and is like looking at your own checking account. It shows you what the company did to generate cash and how it used cash during a given period of time, often monthly, quarterly, or annually, like the income statement. Thus it answers two questions. Where is my cash coming from and where is my cash going? Remember, while each statement has a different purpose, all three are necessary in helping us understand a company's complete financial story. For example, if you want to know whether or not a company is profitable, the income statement is what you need. Even though you know the company is profitable, if you want to know how much money the company has available right now that you can spend, you want to look at the balance sheet. 
and regardless of profitability and current available cash, if you want to know where cash came from and where it went, you look at the cash flow statement. Each document fills in a piece of the puzzle to complete your understanding. Now let us look at how investors or people outside of business use the financial statements that the business produces to determine whether they should invest money in that business, uh, lend money to that business, or do business with that business. The only thing they have to go by is what the income statement, which is the revenue and expenses and profitability of the business, and the balance sheet, which tells us what the business owns, who it owes, and how much investment the shareholders have in the business. Using those statements now, we now apply what's called ratio analysis. Now, ratio analysis is a way of expressing a relationship between different parts of both financial statements. A ratio is simply a mathematical relationship between one quantity or one part of the income statement or balance sheet and any other part of an income statement and balance sheet. And this relationship is a, a series of uh, ratios that we are just beginning to introduce now. These ratios are actually in three categories. One, there is the profitability ratios. That measures the income and the operating success of the business. That's your income statement here. Revenue minus expenses gives me my net income. Then there are the liquidity ratios. These answers the questions, what short-term ability does this firm have to pay its obligations? And that, of course, is the liquidity. We look at the uh, current assets and we relate them to the current liabilities. The current assets being what we have in cash or near cash to pay our current liabilities, our accounts payable, our salaries payable, and so on. Then we look at it and there are ratios that are more long-term in nature. They measure the ability of the company to survive over the long term. Those are our debt to equity ratios or debt to total asset ratios. These are the three categories of ratios. Now we're going to introduce them now and later on we will add more ratios in each of these categories. Now, one of the first questions an investor would ask when looking at the financial statements of a company, what are the earnings? And if I invest in this company and own a share of the company, then what would the earnings per share be, or better known as the EPS? And this measures the net income earned for each share of common stock. Remember, common stock represents ownership in the company. Here we have Best Buy, 2009-2011. Net income, both years. The amount of shares, 2008, they started off with 481,000 and went down to 411. 2009, they went up to 414. Now, in calculating the earnings per share, the investor would take the net income from the income statement minus any preferred stock dividends. Now, we're not going to come across stock dividends at this level. That would be later analysis. And we would relate that to the average common share. So therefore, in 2008, the net income was 1407, no preferred shares. The average share at the beginning was 411, at the end 482. So we add those two together and divide by two, and we see that the EPS in 2008 was three dollars and fifteen cents for every common shareholder. Now, in 2009, or every common share that a shareholder would own. In 2009, again, earnings per share is the net income minus the preferred dividends and the average amount of outstanding shares. And the earnings per share in this case is $2.43. So you can see it went down considerably. And that would be a concern for people reading the financial statements. But you see, you wouldn't see this and just look at the financial statements. You'd only begin to see it when you relate the earnings to the number of outstanding common shares. Now, in profitability ratios, of course, we are looking at the income statement. In this case, in, in liquidity ratios and the solvency ratios, we use the balance sheet. Now, liquidity ratios, of course, relate the current assets, that's the cash or near cash items, to the current liabilities. 
And later on, when we look at who owns these total assets, we're going to do solvency. We're going to relate the amount of long-term debt to the total amount of assets and see how solvent the company is. And the first question is a question of liquidity, and that is liquid means the most liquid asset is cash. And we uh, presented the current assets in order in the order in which they turn themselves into cash. Recall when we did that and um, lectured on classified balance sheet. And in that way now we can relate the ability to pay the current liabilities by looking at the current assets related to current liabilities. So let's go back and look at Best Buy. Current assets in 2009 um, was right here, 8,192, 8,192. But look at the current liabilities, 8,435. So they have more liabilities than they have in current assets. And so the difference between the current assets and the current liabilities is what is called in business working capital. Now be careful of this term capital. It comes up a number of times in accounting. And I tell you, accounting is a language of business. You have capital equipment, the capital invested in the company. Uh, you have to be careful of the definition. What does a person using the word capital actually mean? When they use the term working capital, it means the excess of current assets over current liabilities. And as I showed you in the past, uh, in, the, in the previous screen, there is no excess. There is a deficit. And so when the working capital is positive, there's a good likelihood to pay a debt. But Best Buy has a negative working capital of 243. That is, the liabilities are 243 million more than the current assets. And this is very serious. So for liquidity ratios, we look at working capital and we also look at what's called the current ratio. And that's simply the relationship of current assets over current liabilities. If the current assets equal the current liability, the ratio would be one to one. Well, in this case, the current assets, 8192, current liabilities, 8,435,000, that's 0.97 to one. And so therefore, for every dollar of current liability, Best Buy has 97 cents of current assets in order to pay. And compared to last year, last year it was a dollar eight to one. So you can see that um, they're having more difficulty here with the liquidity ratio. It has gone down considerably. Now the other thing about ratios is they really take on meaning when you compare them to other companies or industry average. In this case over here we compared it to the year before 2008. Now if we compare it to our competitor H.H. H. Gregg in 2009, look, they had a dollar sixty-eight in current assets for every dollar of liabilities. Now there are companies that do industry averages and they present those industry averages called the Dow Industrial Averages and they present industry averages and you can look at your industry and for all companies in your industry the average current ratio is 1.5 to 1. So from this you can see if you're a management of Best Buy you have a problem here and you may have a problem in paying your short-term debts. If you're an investor you'd be kind of concerned about this. But that's what the liquidity ratio helps you look at. Next, we look at. Okay, not the most exciting video, but I think that video sums up on this uh, the sheet I show you on the screen here, which is a summary of selected financial ratios. And in this sh this sheet is taken from your textbook in chapter three, and it is also part of the material in your case number three. In case number three, you are to se select one equation from each one of the selected ratios, profit, profitability, asset management, liquidity, debt management. Select one, not all of them, just one, and find it for that particular, particular company. They defined these ratios in chapter three, uh, and these are the key ratios that we're talking about in these videos that you get from the financial statements, income statement, <clears throat> balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. So this is that sheet that's very important to find that definition of those financial ratios. 
okay, how does this play into our course in these final weeks where we're, and we've just done a capital uh, budget analysis in chapter in case number two. Now we're doing a review of the overall macro position of a company to warrant those investments in capital. And so the financial statement analysis of, of this work is to look at real world financials and tell us what you think and how they're doing. So for example, if we go to our Blackboard in our course syllabus and information in the class, uh, this is our last work this week, uh, case number three due on Sunday, but there are extensions available into August 2nd. If you need them, you just have to let me know. You do your course evaluation, on, uh, which is due on August 2nd, and I'll talk more about that in, a, in our video uh, next video. And the final grades posted for this class will be posted on August 3rd. If you go to your case study area, by the way, if any of you are looking for the solutions to the case number two, there are posted in this file folder as well. But you'll find a variety of files, a rubric, which shows how I'll be grading uh, this case number three, and you should be familiar with the rubrics by now. A, a uh, sample of the PowerPoint of, uh, remember this case is to be done in a PowerPoint format. You're not going to be giving a presentation, but you are going to be supplying the PowerPoint like you were be give, giving in a presentation. I'm just going to be going through this, the slides looking for your information, and we'll show that in the sample format that I've provided. There's that sheet we just saw about the variety of different financial statement ratios, and then the work for chapter uh, for case number three, which is in both PDF and Word doc format. So your job in this case is to provide one file. The file is a PowerPoint showing the answers, showing the concepts of the case. And here's the case right here. I think one of the key aspects of corporate finance at the MBA level is to be able to assess information and then communicate it. You've done that so, so far in this course in a spreadsheet file on capital budget analysis and an APA format file in case number one, explaining and interpreting information. Case number one was real uh, understanding the credit and the risk analysis of a company. And you're gonna be doing that same company in case number three doing a financial statement ratio and ratio analysis as of two dates, the quarter ending March 31, 22, the quarter ending March 31, 21. And you are to select one equation from each one of those four that I just mentioned. Then your analysis should be to compare the two years and let it, and interpret what that information tells you. And this is where I tell you about that. If you want to include industry average in your analysis, that is fine. Your job is to determine and interpret the financial statement value and riskiness, I guess you could say, of the company. So you're going to be reviewing certain aspects of the company's financials as of the quarter ending March 31, 22, and 21 out of those four areas interpreting them, explaining them, and analyzing what they tell you about this company. And here's the sample PowerPoint form format. Now this is a very generic format. I hope you add a little bit of your own personality to this analysis, but if you note it, it's another way of presenting data and interpreting data in this format. And as a manager, as a strategist for a company, you have to explain the interpretation to a variety of people, investors, management, board members, vendors, customers, employees, and how you do that is part of this exercise. So as you can see, you have a title slide, You have an agenda and you're going to be doing, and this is the interpretation of the case. The company in this particular uh, example is Home Depot. You're going to be measuring the four indexes that we just talked about of financial statements, liquidity, asset management, debt management and profitability. And the quarters will be different. It's March 31, 21 and 22. And then you put it in some type of bullet format, it getting giving the answers. Now, I do not need to see the financial statements of your company. 
You do not need to include these. I want a concise presentation without a lot of numbers. Uh, you don't need to do that. I have access to the financials of all your companies. I will have that. I don't need to see it. I needed something like this where you examine the company. For example, here in this, they pick the current ratio of this company, liquidity ratios. And so there's the information. Here's the asset management. They use the asset turnover ratio. There's a variety of ones you can use. You as the interpreter have to select which one you'll use. Here's the debt management. Notice nice and neat, concise, to the point, easy to read, easy to present. And finally, profitability, where they're taking a look at return on assets. Then your review, a slide or two on the interpretation or the review of the material. How has the firm improved from the previous quarter or the previous year? Is the firm managed efficiently by what you find out? As a potential investor, would you consider this stock to purchase? And then your own analysis of the company. And the last slide will be references. Notice pretty concise, pretty simple as far as the basics of the presentation. You just have to go out and research and get the data, select the ratios, and put it all together into this slide presentation. No more than 10 to 12 slides are needed and keep it simple, keep it fresh, keep it in your, in your personality. You can put in colors, pictures, but don't muck it up with a lot of busy work. Just like this, give me the information and that's what, and I wanna see and read your interpretation. If you just give me the information, but you do not have that interpretation in your own words about the information, you'll lose a lot of points. This is a key slide to have. It's showing me what you got out of this information. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Here's the sample. You can download it and review it and even use it as a template if you like. But I'd rather you see some of your interpretation and your personality in this analysis. So this work in case number three is kind of doing a final format of interpreting financial data to be used in strategic decision making. Is the company efficient? Or do we have any problems? Is there some, is this, is this company worth uh, value in the stock market? Whatever as given in the case. That's what I'm looking to, for you to do in this format. Again, as you put this together the next week, you have questions, feel free to contact me, send in me an email, post a discussion forum. And again, the work is due. Sunday, July 31st, <coughs> excuse me. But as also, you, there are extensions available into the early week of August 1 and 2, Monday or Tuesday. But you gotta let me know if you're gonna do that. And that'll be the, your last work. So what we've done in this class is risk analysis interpretation, capital budget, return on investment interpretation, and financial statement interpretation, all three key sectors of analyzing and making strategic decisions in corporate finance. Again, in week six, you have some definitions of this work and financial statement analysis as described here. My subject of my video on Wednesday, on, excuse me, tomorrow, will be the subject of week seven and eight, financial mergers and acquisitions, additional strategies that drive capital decision-making besides financial statement review. There's a couple of articles to read, but again, you can read these, but again, I'm not assessing you on anything in that regard. Case three is just about financial statement analysis. The balance of this work this week is for your information only. There'll be no assessment of that. It's basically preparing you for the final class the six, I think it's 699, 697 in your MBA program where you'll summarize your studies. And this is where that'll help you in that class. Okay, that should give you a good start to uh, your case work for this week. I'll have some more information for you tomorrow in my follow-up video. Uh, for the case. And if I warrant it, and I think students need it, I'll do an even another update video 
at the end of the week. But I think two videos were surmised for this week. But again, if you need some extra information, I will provide that if you request it. So there's where we stand. You now have the basics for case three, and we will talk about the balance of our work in our video tomorrow. So this is Professor Hasse. Again, I'll see you all again later on in the week with a video. Any questions, you know where to find me. Good luck and see you later.